In today's video, we're going to go over how to add a beneficiary on Treasury Direct for your I-bonds, T-bills, and pretty much anything you own on the treasurydirect.gov website. By adding a beneficiary, you can save your loved ones the hassle of having to go through probate to inherit your U.S. Treasuries after you die. And I want to thank one of my viewers for asking this question about beneficiaries. And since I was going through the process myself, I figured it'd be great to share it with you all. As with many things on Treasury Direct, it's not a super straightforward process. In this video, I'm first going to go over step by step how to add a beneficiary to your I-bonds and T-bills. What I'm not going to be covering is how to add a co-owner to your Treasury Direct account. But just realize that it's a very similar process. Second, I'm going to discuss what you need to do to prepare your beneficiaries to inherit your U.S. Treasuries in the unfortunate event that you should die. And finally, I'm going to talk about an alternative for letting your beneficiaries inherit your U.S. Treasuries that many of you may consider a lot easier process. This alternative process will work for your T-bills, but will not work for your I-bonds. All this right after. I am not a financial advisor. This video is for entertainment purposes only. Learn to invest like a wolf at your own risk. All right, everyone, welcome back. The first thing we're going to look at is how to add a beneficiary on treasurydirect.gov step by step. Now, this is the way I'm adding beneficiaries to my I-bonds and T-bills. It may not be the only way to do it, but it is a way that I prefer, and I consider it to be a pretty easy process. But if you find a process that works better for you, of course, feel free to use that process instead. So once you log into your Treasury Direct account, first click on Manage Direct, then click on Update My Registration List. That will take you to this page that will display your current list of available registrations. As you can see, here I only have one registration, which is just set to me, and by default, it's set as my preferred registration. And of course, I blackened out my name and social security number for this video to protect my privacy. Now to add a beneficiary, I click on Add Registration. That will take me to this page where I can fill out the information for my beneficiary. And just note that the beneficiary must be a person, not an entity. First, I'll select Beneficiary at the top, and under First Named Registrant, I will fill out my information. I'll go ahead and enter my first name and last name, and I'll enter my Social Security number for Taxpayer Identification Number. Under the section for Second Named Registrant, I'll go ahead and enter my beneficiary's first name and last name, and their Social Security number for taxpayer identification number. And because I want to make this my preferred registration so that I can easily add my beneficiary to all of my future Treasury Direct purchases, I'm going to go ahead and check the box for make this my preferred registration. Once everything looks correct, I'll click submit. Now, as you can see, I have two registrations. And the one I just created that includes my beneficiary is now my preferred registration. I blackened out our names and social security numbers for this video to protect our privacy. But just so you know, the format for the registration with your beneficiary looks like this. It's going to be your name and social security number, followed by POD, which stands for payable on death, and that will be followed by your beneficiary's name and social security number. Now that I've created this registration that includes my beneficiary, I can use it to add my beneficiary to any of my current holdings. To do that, I just click on Manage Direct, then I click Edit a Registration. And as you can see in this example, I have $14,100 worth of Treasury bills, and I have $10,768 worth of Series I Savings Bonds, also known as I Bonds. I'm going to first add my beneficiary to my I Bonds, so I'll click on Series I Savings Bond and click Submit. That takes me to this page where I have to answer one of my security questions. As I've mentioned in previous videos, be very careful to enter the correct answer to your security question. If you answer it incorrectly a number of times, you may get locked out of your account, which will require you to call Treasury Direct customer service 
to get your account unlocked. And depending on how busy they are, you could be placed on hold for a very long time. All right, so after I answer my security question, I click submit, which takes me to this page that displays my iBonds. As you can see, there are two entries for my iBonds because I purchased them on two separate occasions. I made one purchase for $7,000 and another purchase for $3,000. You can also see that the current registration is just set to me. And after this process is done, you'll see that it's been updated for me and my beneficiary. I wanna add my beneficiary to both of these iBonds. So I'll go ahead and check the box next to both of them, then click the select button. That takes me to this page that shows both of my iBonds and shows that the registration is currently set to just me. So in the drop down next to registration, I'll go ahead and select the registration that includes me and my beneficiary. And then I'll click submit. And you'll notice this message at the top that says, the registration change you requested has been made. Any previously granted view or transact rights for a security has been removed as a result of this change. I'll talk about this more later after I add my beneficiary to my T-bills. You can also see here that the registration has been updated. Remember before it was just set to me. Now it's set to me and my beneficiary separated by POD. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for my T-bills. So I'll just select treasury bills, then click submit. Answer my security question again and click submit. And as you can see here, I have many T-bills that I've purchased and they're all currently just registered to me. I can edit up to 50 registrations at a time. So I'll go ahead and click the checkbox next to each one of them and then click submit. This next page displays all of the T-bills that I'll be editing. So I'll go ahead and click the drop down next to registration and select the one that includes me and my beneficiary and then click submit. Now you can see that the registration has been updated to me and my beneficiary. And you see that same message at the top about any previously granted view or transact rights for a security has been removed as a result of this change. When you add a beneficiary to anything you own in Treasury Direct, if your beneficiary also has a Treasury Direct account, you can grant them view rights. View rights will allow your beneficiary to see the securities in which they are registered as a beneficiary. You can't grant your beneficiaries transact rights. Transact rights are for co-owners, which I'm not covering in this video. I'm not gonna walk through this entire process, but I will show you how to get there. First, click on Manage Direct, then click on Assign View or Transact Rights. I'll go ahead and select my treasury bills and then click Submit. That'll take me to this Assign Rights Summary page, and then I'll just select the first treasury bill on the list to show you what it looks like. And as you can see, the rights for this T-bill is none. If I wanna grant view rights, I'll click add, which will take me to this add rights page. Then I'll have to enter my beneficiary's treasury direct account number and then click submit. At the time of this video, I don't know what my beneficiary's treasury direct account number is, so I'm not gonna be able to complete this process at this time. So that's all there is to adding a beneficiary to your treasury direct holdings. But what if you have purchases that are pending that you did not originally register to your beneficiary? If you've watched my previous videos, you know that I sometimes make my purchases two months in advance. Since those purchases are still pending, I can either wait until those purchases go through and then follow the same process to change my registration to my beneficiary. Or I can cancel those pending purchases and repurchase them with the registration set to my beneficiary. To demonstrate what I mean, I'm filming this part a few weeks later. And as you can see, I have these six 26 week T-bills and this one four week T-bill that are still just registered to me. So I'll have to go ahead and follow the same process as before to change the registration to me and my beneficiary. So what about reinvestments? As you may also know, if you watch my previous videos, I like to set up automatic reinvestments. Will those reinvestments get registered to my beneficiary? In my experience, the reinvestments for the securities that are registered to my beneficiary did continue registering to my beneficiary. And as you can see here, I've got several of these T-bills that are registered to me and my beneficiary, and these were reinvestments. And if you're ever unsure about what's registered to whom, you can always go back to this page 
and it will clearly show what securities are assigned to what registration. All right, so now that we've gone over how to register your securities on Treasury Direct to your beneficiary, what does your beneficiary need to do to inherit your securities when you die? Unfortunately, there's not a lot of information about this on Treasury Direct. The only thing I could find was this page for electronic savings bonds, which I'm assuming is going to be the same for Treasury bills and other securities. And all it says is if the person who has died has an online Treasury Direct account, contact us. We will put a hold on the account and tell you what to do. So what I'm going to tell you next is not official information from Treasury Direct, but this is what I'm planning to do. First, I'm going to let my beneficiary know that I've selected them as my beneficiary for my securities on treasurydirect.gov. I'll also let them know that they need to call Treasury Direct if I die. And I'll be sure to give them my full name that I used on my Treasury Direct account, as well as my social security number and my Treasury Direct account number. I'm not really sure if they'll need my account number, but I'm going to give it to them anyways, just in case. Most likely, they're also going to need to provide proof of my death, such as a death certificate. And they're probably also going to have to fill out a form. There are several forms on Treasury Direct. So in my opinion, it would really be best for the beneficiary to contact Treasury Direct so that they can let them know which form to use for this specific situation. All right, so now that we've discussed how to add a beneficiary to your securities on Treasury Direct, let's talk about another way that you can designate a beneficiary to your T-bills that many of you may consider to be a much easier process. Just note that this alternative method at the time of this video will not work for I-bonds. And this method I'm talking about is to purchase your treasury bills on a broker such as Fidelity instead of through Treasury Direct. I've made a couple of videos on how to purchase T-bills through Fidelity here and here. Feel free to check them out if you're interested. The great thing about purchasing T-bills through Fidelity is that just like most brokerages these days, online orders are commission free. And many people consider the experience to be more user friendly than using Treasury Direct. And you can simply add your beneficiary to your brokerage account instead of T-bill by T-bill as you must do in Treasury Direct. Unfortunately, you still have to use Treasury Direct for I-bonds. Since at the time of this video, electronic I-bonds can only be purchased through Treasury Direct. All right, so if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and share it with your family and friends. And since you're watching this video, I'm going to assume you're also interested in other fixed income investments. So be sure to watch this playlist that I made right here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.